Chapter 7 is about the media and how the media influences politics. First, talking about different types of media. Once upon a time, there were really only a couple of types, broadcast media and print media. And in broadcast media, you might hear the term sound bites being used, little catchphrases, little things that are going to get you wanting to watch a certain program later. So watch 60 minutes later tonight for this groundbreaking story on such and such a topic. Those are sound bites to get you interested. Print media, you have similar to sound bites, catchy newspaper headlines, magazine article headlines, journal article headlines. But the most influential today in the modern world source of media is the internet. This is changing the game, shall we say, for conveying information, particularly the ability to use social media to spread a message. If you look at news sources on a typical day, a lot of people will watch the local news, probably for the weather report. Others will watch national or cable TV. But a growing number of people are receiving their information from online, and a shrinking number of people are reading newspapers or listening to the radio. So television and online news consumption are your most common forms of news consumption today. Now, who follows the news all or most of the time? The older you are, the more likely you are to consume the news. Therefore, older people tend to be paid attention to a lot more than younger people. Now, the power of the new media. New media is constantly available to younger generations. So things, articles that could be posted to Facebook or to Twitter or YouTube live casts. These are the new ways of getting information out to people. And here is an example of a Facebook feed from Reason Magazine, a libertarian magazine, spoofing and teasing about a speech endorsing Donald Trump for president in 2016. While this is satirical, it is a good image to at least show the way that things are pushed via social media and the number of people that can like, comment, or share the information. Now, the regulation of broadcast media is having less and less of an impact in an age where people are receiving more and more of their news online. But you have rules like the equal time rule, the right of rebuttal, and the fairness doctrine that were supposed to regulate information appearing on the news to make it more fair and balanced and not have one-sided media pushing certain ideas on people. Those stopped being enforced decades ago, and so now you have cable news networks like Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, and they are absolutely pushing certain narratives. Now, how can the media shape public opinion? Well, they can set the agenda. They can tell you what is important, like framing, priming. They can frame an issue a certain way. They can prime you by peppering you with information constantly about a certain issue to then set the agenda and get you to be thinking about what they want you to think about. Politicians have long wanted influence over the media, and there were a couple of instances in which the news media kind of fought back against the influence of politicians. So, for example, in the controversy over the Pentagon Papers and whether they should be put out to the public, the New York Times successfully sued the United States government at the time President Richard Nixon was in power and got a favorable decision in which the Pentagon Papers, dealing with the Vietnam War and the government strategy in the Vietnam War to be released to the general public. Then, in more recent history, you have what was known as the AP News scandal in which the Obama administration was pressuring journalists to print stories a certain way to set the narrative, to set the agenda like was being mentioned before. And in both of these cases, 
media kind of stepped up and said, no, we're not going to be told what to do. The rise of adversarial journalism. So President Kennedy was one of the first people to use televised news conferences to promote his domestic agenda. And he was very successful at appealing to the American people in much the same way that FDR had been successful in using the radio and his fireside chats. However, during Vietnam, the New York Times versus U.S. decision severely damaged the media's relationship with the U.S. government. The media was a little less willing to cooperate with the government after the experience in Vietnam. Now, today, you have cable news networks that are using a 24-hour news cycle and are really influenced by the two major parties. Two good examples of this are MSNBC and Fox News. And they are almost exclusively promoting one particular political party's views, and this is not very healthy. The significance of comedic journalism has grown over time. You have a couple of things that in pop culture in recent history have become more and more popular. And as a matter of fact, there's something that's not even on this slide that I'm going to add for you. So The Onion is a satirical online newspaper. It used to come out in print form, but it's exclusively online now. And then The Daily Show is a satirical televised newscast. It's no longer with Jon Stewart. I believe it's with Trevor Noah, who does The Daily Show now. But you had online newspaper, so the written word, or a televised newscast. Now, another good comedic outlet today is the Babylon Bee. And the Babylon Bee is like the conservative counterpart of the Onion. The Onion is relatively liberal, and the Babylon Bee is much more conservative. But it's very similar to the Onion in that they put out a lot of satire online. You can see an example of a satirical headline from The Onion here. Bush urges the nation to be quiet for a minute while he tries to think. So obviously comedic, but sometimes when you expose people to issues via comedic journalism, they actually choose to pay attention to the actual news story as well. So sometimes comedic journalism can actually lead to consumption of traditional journalism. That's the end of the lecture. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I'll see you in class.